Live from San Juan, Puerto Rico, it's theCUBE, covering Blockchain Unbound. Brought to you by Blockchain Industries. Hello everyone, welcome back to our exclusive coverage. This is theCUBE's coverage in Puerto Rico for Blockchain Unbound Restart Week. A variety of activities here on the island around blockchain, cryptocurrency, the decentralized internet, the future of work, the future of play, the future of society, all here happening. My next guest is an entrepreneur, Steve Stewart, who's the CEO and co-founder of, of Vets, V-E-Z-T. Really changing the game around music, relationship to fans, and using blockchain and tokens to enable that. Welcome to theCUBE. Thank you so much, John. It's great to be here. Thanks for coming on. So first, talk a little bit about what your value proposition, what you guys are doing. Obviously, people who ever downloaded iTunes and then said, oh, this sucks, let's go to Spotify. <laughs> now we're going, hey, I'm on Instagram, I have access to my artists directly. The internet is a direct response vehicle, one-on-one. -on -one. Talk so about your there's opportunity. There's two value props, one for the consumer, right? So if you're an artist fan, and you love a song, you love an artist, you want to be involved with that artist on a one-to-one -one basis, there's no way to do that right now. You can follow somebody on Twitter, you can like their YouTube, that doesn't connect you with them. Our platform lets you buy in, and by buy in I mean ownership. You own a piece of the IP with that artist in their song. So it's on a song by song basis, but if Ariana Grande is my favorite artist, and I want to buy a little slice of her song for $10 or $100, I now have the opportunity to put that out there, and I can share in that royalty stream with her, and she and I will connect on a level. If she wants to take my information and send other things to me, like concert tickets or backstage passes, that's possible now. So the value prop for the fan is connection with the artist and ability to say, I own a piece of that royalty stream, I own a piece of that song. And on the artist side, the value prop is I now get to actually share directly with my fans, build that community directly. There's no gatekeeper like a label or a publishing company in the middle. And I have the ability to reach out and monetize directly based on demand and merit and then take that and do whatever I want and build up my brand. So this is a great example where artists that have direct relationships might be undervalued. And also, in a way, they're doing their own mini ICO, so to speak, with their fans by sharing in the future value of the success with the people that got them there. They are, we call it an <laughs> ISO, an initial song offering. So just like a ticket on sale, it allows an artist to pick a time and date and say, at noon on Thursday, I'm putting up 5% of my song to raise $10,000. Yeah. They pick the pricing, they pick the amount they want to put up. We, in, we admin the actual royalty stream for those yeah. people that put money into it, and the artist keeps the rest of it. You know, I've seen a lot of pitches, I've seen a lot of stuff online, of, oh yeah, we're going to revolutionize the music industry, we're going to use tokens, I've seen ICO pitches. But again, if you look at the smart money investors, they're looking at deals and saying, is there a network effect? Is there a protocol of some sort in there? Obviously, you've identified a relationship that has tokenization or token economics kind of built into the business model. Take a minute to explain that key tokenization that why your business is set for token economics, why you over someone else. So my background's in the music business. I used to manage a band called Stone Temple Pilots for 20 years, actually for 10 years, from 1990 to 2000. I had 20 other artists in that meantime. I understand the pain points from an artist's perspective. I also know where the value is in the industry. It's in the publishing. Most of these entertainment businesses, the IP is where the real value is. Film, books, TV, music. It's all in the underlying content. Not the distribution, not how many times I've downloaded it, but the actual ownership of the content. What we want to do is put that in a basis where the artist can now take that on a fractional basis. We can use a tokenized product to let the fans buy in. The blockchain helps us track those rights, keep them secure, make them transparent, and allow the ownership to be shared between literally thousands or hundreds of thousands of people. And this also helps build community. I want to, but I want to get your thoughts on something. So I gave a, a uh, I held a panel in Sundance this year, Sundance Film Festival called The New Creative. Sure. And what you're seeing emerging is a new artist. The new artists are digital native, their fan base is direct, things we just talked about, but they're undervalued because the gatekeepers, either the studios and or labels in your instance, are controlling distribution and they're also controlling the activities. So we all know what Apple's done with some of their artists and artists have to go on the road and do all this work. Well, digital changes all that. So from your perspective as, a, as an industry uh, guru in music, how has digital changed that dynamic and talk about this new artist breathe, this new young, upcoming digital generation well, of artists. there's two things. First, internet really hasn't delivered what it said it was going to the music community, right? When you had Napster come out, it's great for the fan base, the artists and the creators actually lost out, right? I mean, music got valued from here to here. It went almost to zero. People were sharing files for, for free. 
So at some point we thought, why Regulatory are Regulatory tried to solve that legal. Tried and tried, but once you build a generation yeah. on free, it's hard to change that. So on the fan side, it was great. There was a lot more distribution. On the artist and creator side, it wasn't so great. What we're trying to do is bring value back to that. We're going to use digital in a way that lets people share what they believe in without these gatekeepers, like you said, fully demand-based, right? So if I'm a small artist that plays banjo in Kentucky, but I've got 100,000 fans that really love me, and they can show that by buying in, forget the labels, forget yeah. the publishers, yeah, yeah. forget the brands, I now have a direct connection, I'm earning a living directly from yeah. my fan base, which is how it should be. Yeah, and kind of like we do open source content, we were talking about so our business, you are enabling people to self-identify with the artists, 100%. letting the artist be open to that, make that handshake, or if you will, digital handshake, and have a relationship beyond just being a fan. Most of the labels, in fact, all the labels, Spotify, YouTube, uh, Pandora, none of those platforms let the artist share directly with the consumer, right? If I say, look, I've got 20,000 streams today, can you tell me who they were? Yep. No. Can you show me where the downloads are? No. Why aren't they letting those people connect? I mean, the artist has a natural yes. connection yes. with their fans. Well, that's because the tech platforms are optimized for a different business model. Of course. And look at Facebook. They're, they're living in their own problem. Their success is almost killing them. They have this centralized data optimization for the wrong incentive. They're optimizing data for advertising, not user experience. That's right. In this case, you're saying, hey, let's use the infrastructure and crypto to optimize the fan relationship and expand it. The reason artists get on stage, the reason they write a song is to connect with people. Right? We've disembodied yeah. that connection to the point where they're out there in the ether and the fans are over here and they're like, how do we get together? If we can yeah. bring that back, there's a very powerful connection there that we can, we can take advantage of and let people actually make money from their craft. Well, Steve, great to have you on theCUBE because one, you have domain expertise, your business model's solid, and we've been saying um, yesterday and on theCUBE that it's a reverse of the old stack model. You, the top of the stack is the business model. You've nailed the business model, the underlying plumbing will sort itself out. So with that in mind, how are you guys looking at the plumbing? Why, what are you doing here in Puerto Rico? Are you raising money? Are you doing an ICO? Take a little bit to explain your relationship to the plumbing under the hood in the blockchain crypto world and then what you guys are doing here in Puerto Rico. So we started building our platform the traditional way. We took traditional VC funding about a year ago um, as we were building the platform, we understood the importance of a blockchain, some type of decentralized ledger that allows people to look transparently under the ownership stack. As we were building that, one of our engineers said, hey, have you guys heard of an ICO? We had no idea what this was about a year ago. <laughs> Got educated very quickly, dove deep on it, and realized there was an opportunity, not really for the fact that it's crypto, but but to actually capitalize the company in a yeah. meaningful way. We want to scale this very quickly. We've got strategic partners in Asia, other parts of the world that we need to grow very quickly into. So we realized it was an opportunity to have, we did a raise, uh, close it December 1st, um, are on exchanges. A an equity raise or a token raise? It's a token raise. Okay. Um, we did a, a, a US-based PPM, SFT, a soft. So a security token? Uh, it's a utility token, okay. but we followed a, a process that our legal advisors advise us in the US, keep it as a PPM SAFT. If it's offshore, so it's offshore. So accredited investors. Accredited investors only. Um, small cap, try to keep it reasonable because we don't need $100 million to go to build this platform right now. Um, we're looking at this in a traditional business sense. So we're building a real platform with a real team. Um, we took advantage of that. We got listed on exchange January 12th. Um, at, at this point, we're head down in product. We're looking to launch this within 45 days at Coachella. We had an event last two nights ago at South by Southwest. We came up here from Austin, so we're going back to California tomorrow. <laughs> You're on a plane. It's, yeah, we're, we're on a road <laughs> show. But uh, we've got artist brand partners now. We're, we're signing yeah. people, two or three artists a week that come in. Um, we've got publishing catalogs that are coming on board. We're realizing that a, there's a B2B play because publishers only monetize yeah. the top two or three percent of their catalogs. The other 98% get no love. Yeah. If they can put that on a, on a retail platform yeah. like us and allow consumers to buy directly into it, it's a whole windfall for them. You know, everyone's a media company these days. We've been saying it and that's the new media model. You've got a great formula, good luck. We'd love to keep in touch. Absolutely. Um, what are you guys looking to do uh, the next six months? Obviously get the product out the door. Ecosystem, you got to part, recruit more artists. What's yeah, my goal is 100,000 songs on the platform by the end of summer. Uh, like I said, we're, we're doing a lot of brand activations at music festivals where we see people, you know, an exponential growth. Each song comes with an artist fan base that's built into it. We're yeah. also supporting producers, co-writers, performers, the other guys that aren't on the stage. Yeah. We realize this platform's from them because they also have ownership in these songs but have never had a way to monetize it. So All right. we're, we're growing this very quickly. Steve Stewart, CEO, co-founder of Vets, V-E-Z-T. Check them out. Uh, if you like music, this is a great way to actually take part in being a fan and owner of the national property. Great business model. Um, we'll keep in touch. Thanks for sharing theCUBE. More live coverage here on theCUBE. 
Bring you all the action, extracting the signal from the noise. I'm John Furrier. Thanks for watching. We'll be right back with more coverage after this break. Thanks, guys. Thanks, John.